typically you had an opportunity to stretch your legs and take a break um, in the tutorial segment this is a long one this is the longest one uh, and apparently this is the most complicated so if we can get this right um, like we're over the hill we've got the hard part out of the way uh, by the time uh, we finish this because again this is going to be split up in several segments um, this is what we should have we should have an enemy that damages your player um, uh, the, the hearts do reflect as we see from previous uh, opportunities and um, you know the, the enemy should have its own AI to where it wanders around randomly and it doesn't fall off the side so by the time we finish all of that the enemy should be set up correctly so um, let's go ahead and dive in and get started uh, there was something that, that needs to be fixed on um, this real quick. When I don't know if you had this issue, but whenever I entered in the layers, it automatically threw the enemy into the projectiles uh, layer, and that's not right. It needs to be in enemies. So uh, our players should be able to interact with the enemies. Let me go, said, go ahead and check and see if that's correct in this scene. That I should be able to push him. All right, so I should be able to push him around now. Before um, it, it wouldn't do that. So if I had it set to projectiles, let me go ahead and fall off and die. Uh, I'll just sit on his head and never die. All right. Um, so let let's see the player uh, enemy Leo. If we set it back to projectiles, I think you're gonna walk right through him. Uh, maybe not. Whatever. Anyway, now uh, just make sure you check that and, and get that fixed because if you don't, you're not going to see any damage on the enemy. So on the enemy, um, we have to use uh, a, another state machine because there are actually several states for this enemy. It's really kind of complicated, but again, we just take it one little bite at a time. Um, we know that there is going to be an alive state and, an, and a dead state for this enemy. And when the dead state happens, we want something to happen. But while it's alive, we, we have several states inside the alive state. So we have a patrol state, we have a cause damage state, and we have a uh, chase player state. So let's see if we can go ahead and knock that out real quick. So open up level three from your scenes. And um, under the enemy on level three uh, remember we changed the layer here so let's go ahead and override and apply that to all of the prefabs so that all of our enemies are on the same layer and let's go down and add a new um, component a state machine component here and we're going to create a new macro uh, in our um, in our macros and we're going to call that oops let's call that enemy so we've got an enemy uh, state machine inside our macros. And again, uh, let's go up one more time and apply the changes to our prefab. So it, it goes all the way across the board to all of our enemies. Now, um, in this state machine, uh, we need to delete the start state. Um, and we are going to create uh, what's called a super state. And I think what that is, is it, it's kind of like a macro inside a macro. When we go into our start uh, state, which we're gonna rename alive, uh, we need it to be able to uh, run yet another state machine inside this state machine. So that's called a super state, right? So uh, we're gonna right click uh, the alive and we're gonna tell it to toggle start. Now it was actually already toggle start. So if you're following the tutorial, it needs to be lit up, it needs to be green, or else it won't, won't work correctly. Now we're going to make another flow state down here on the bottom, and we're going to call that flow state, you guessed it, dead. And uh, we're going to make a transition between alive and dead. Now we don't go back because they never come back to life, right? They just stay dead. So um, in the alive state, we need we need another uh, we need another set of states and we're going to do and this is getting kind of complicated I understand but just bear with me we're gonna need another super state called patrol and the reason it's a super state is because we're going to run another state 
inside uh, patrol. So you're going to have more than one state inside patrol. Um, so we need a patrol state. We need a flow state called um, chase. And then we need another super state called damage. And that needs to be a toggle start as well. So if you right click that, um, that is what that is going to be. Uh, I believe that's right. Nope, you know what, I messed up. That is going to be a flow state. And that one is going to be called damage. So this can damage the player is what that's talking about. So that is gonna be a toggle start, but it's not gonna be a state machine. Now, we need to make a transition from patrol to chase and back. Transition back to patrol. So we need to be able to leave patrol mode and go into chase the player mode, and we need it to go back to just regular patrol mode. All right, so let's look at damage real quick, and then uh, we'll take a break. So on the damage state machine, we're going to open that up. And when we open that up, we see um, these three objects again. We're going to delete those three things. And we're going to use our on collision with macro. So you can right click it and put it in there, or you can just add unit and do on collision with, right? And it's going to check, and you just drag it in there. But we are going to tell this object. So I want you to damage. Uh, so remember, this is the damage um, macro. So anytime you interact with the player, this is what I want you to do. I want you to damage it. So how do we do that? We're going to do a trigger custom event because we made, if you remember, on our player script, we made, or our player graph, excuse me, we made a damage modifier. Modifier on that. I'll go show you that in just a second. So anytime this object interacts with the player object, uh, you interact with the player object, then what I want you to do, oh, we need an argument here, because I want you to do something. What do I want you to do? I want you to affect the integer by one. Uh, the damage integer. So I want you to hurt the damage. I want you to knock one off of that. And remember, there was three total. So when you run into the enemy, it should take off one damage from that. So let's go ahead and make sure that's all saved. Save the game. And let's see if we set it up correctly. Not only should the uh, player take damage from one heart, but it should hurt him and he should play a hurt animation. Oh, that isn't working right. All right, so after about an hour, I finally figured out why my player was not taking damage. Um, let me uh, just real quick go in there and save that just real quick. All right, so let's try, see if I got it fixed in this level. If I don't, I know how to fix it. Man, I went back and redid everything I did on player health and enemies to figure it out. Okay, so it's not working, right? The reason why is because for some reason I didn't update my player. Remember I was telling you that override thing? That's what happened. I didn't override the player to where I was running a state machine on every player. So I mean, God, it's frustrating. Like, what the crap is going on? So I need to run a state machine and I need to do player health on my player and update, update that player mechanic. So now whenever i start it i should see that the enemy hurts my player let's see yeah all right so you see that mechanic you see it hurts him until he's dead and whenever he kills him he restarts the level so finally man that was frustrating i've heard it said that uh game design and coding exposes your own mental health <laughs> so if you don't handle stress very well like me you get real frustrated uh, welcome to gaming <laughs>